All right, so we're going to go ahead and use this graphic organizer as a nice overview for photosynthesis and everything that happens in photosynthesis. For photosynthesis, our general equation, or generally what's going to happen, is that we're going to have carbon dioxide, and I'm writing this in red because these are going to be the reactants. So we have carbon dioxide and water, <clears throat> and we will add in some sunlight. And from that, we will produce oxygen and glucose, or sugar. If we were to write this as a chemical formula, it would look like this, where we would say that we had 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O. Add in some sunlight, which provides the energy. And then we would get 6... O2 plus C6H12O6. Whenever we talk about photosynthesis, this is something that's going to be happening in a plant or in something that is an autotroph. So we have our leaf, which is going to be an autotroph, meaning that it makes its own food. So here's our little picture representation of this. So we're going to have our light, which is going to go in. Make sure that you're using colors to note this. So our reactants will be red and our products will be blue. So we have light coming in. We have carbon dioxide or CO2 coming into the leaf. It's going to enter through something called the stomata which are going to be little pores or little holes in the bottom of the leaf. And then we also have water, or H2O, which is going to be another reactant for photosynthesis. Out of photosynthesis, we're going to get oxygen. So we'll get oxygen here. I'm making that in blue for my products. And then we'll get glucose which is just my little cupcake over here. So once our plant cell or whatever our autotroph is going to be, once it makes the oxygen and the glucose, something like the glucose is going to be consumed by a heterotroph. So this will be consumed by a heterotroph, which is going to just be an organism that needs to eat food in order to survive. So that would be things like us, or we are heterotrophs. Now we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the structure of the chloroplast. So within the chloroplast, or within rather the leaf, if we kind of zoom in, that's what we're looking at with this picture over here. And I'm going to grab green, and we're going to color all the chloroplast green. So this large thing is our cell. So remember, a plant cell is going to be rectangular. And all of these are going to be our chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are where photosynthesis takes place within a plant cell. And then this will be our little zoom in of our chloroplast. So if we look at the structure of our chloroplast, we are going to first have our outer membrane. So our chloroplast has a double membrane, which we had talked about earlier in the year when we looked at the endosymbiotic theory and talked about how chloroplasts were um, ancient prokaryotes that would have been um, kind of engulfed into another cell. So it has an inner and an outer membrane. So we have our outer membrane, and then we also have our inner membrane. The other parts of the chloroplasts that are important. So we have one individual kind of folding of the inner membrane that we call the thylakoid. This is going to be the part that contains chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the pigment that is going to be used in photosynthesis to absorb sunlight. And so the chlorophyll is going to be contained in the thylakoid on the thylakoid membrane. Whenever we have a stack of them, we call this stack a granum. 
A granum is just, again, a stack of thylakoids. Whenever I think of chloroplast, I always think of thin mints, and uh, I think of the granum as the sleeve of thin mints inside of the box, and then I think of the thylakoid as each individual little thin mint. The last piece is the stroma. The stroma is going to be the space inside of the chloroplast. The reason why we talk about these is because this is where the two different parts of photosynthesis happen. So in the thylakoid membrane, we have the light dependent reactions happening. And then inside of the stroma, we have the light independent reactions happening. All right, so let's take a look at photosynthesis overall. And what happens overall in photosynthesis is that we transform light energy into chemical energy. This happens in two steps in photosynthesis. And so we have our light reactions, which are going to transform light energy into chemical energy. And then we have our light independent reactions, also called the Kalin cycle or the dark reactions. So this is Kalin cycle or the dark reactions. And they are going to transform chemical energy as a more short term chemical energy into chemical energy in a long term chemical energy. And we'll uh, talk about that in a little bit more detail in just a minute. So let's go ahead and grab our colors and start working our way through this picture as a way to uh, visualize and show photosynthesis. So we'll start with green to show the chloroplast. So this circle here, I'm just going to do a green dotted line, but this is just visualizing what's happening inside of the chloroplast. When we are looking at the chloroplast, we'll start with our light dependent reactions. And so We'll start up here. I should have written light dependent reactions. But this is going to take place, or these are going to take place on the thylakoid. So I'm just going to circle these in green. Okay, so our light dependent reactions take place on the thylakoids or on the thylakoid membranes. Whenever we look at the light dependent reactions, they happen in a few steps. I've added them here to the slide, but you can just add them as we talk about them and I'll talk um, as we go through them. So the first step for the light dependent reactions, which happen on the thylakoids, is that light is going to be absorbed. So the photosystems absorb sunlight. So I'm just going to draw a red arrow showing the reactants going into step one. So here's our sun or our light. So our photosystems will absorb the sunlight. Photosystems are going to contain chlorophyll, and chlorophyll is going to be the pigment that absorbs the sunlight. Whenever we look at our photosystems, um, what they are going to be producing is they are going to be making what we call high energy electrons. And so they make high energy electrons that are then going to be passed down the electron transport chain. So this is going to pass down high energy electrons. Now, from here, what we are going to find is that we're going to then split water. So we have our water here, and our water is going to come in. Water is going to be split into the hydrogen ion and electrons, and then it's going to produce oxygen. So I'm going to grab my blue for my oxygen. So at this point, oxygen is going to be released. And then the last step is something called ATP synthase, which is a protein, is going to be used to make ATP. And so ATP is going to be made during this process as well. Now the next thing that I wanted to add is this, so I'll talk through it one more time. But we have some special molecules that are going to be used during photosynthesis. So we have NADP plus and ADP. Now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go ahead and grab brown. And so we're going to put brown. I'm going to just put a brown box. You can color it in. 
but these are going to be our electron acceptors and our energy acceptors. Okay, so these are going to be our electron acceptors. What's going to happen is that both of these are going to be used in the light dependent reactions to produce short term energy compounds. So I'm going to go ahead and put what they produce here. So we have NADPH and ATP. These are going to be short term energy storing compounds, so I'm going to mark them in orange. Okay, so in photosynthesis during the light dependent reactions, photosystems absorb the sunlight. This creates high energy electrons. This energy from the electrons needs to be captured, and so it's passed down the electron transport chain. As this is happening, this is going to produce NADPH. So from NAD+, it will help to produce NADPH. We're going to have water coming in and being split and oxygen being produced in the third step. And then in the fourth step, we're going to have ATP synthase using a charge gradient to make ATP. Okay, so this ATP is then going to be made from there. These products from the light dependent reactions, which are oxygen and then NADPH and ATP, NADPH and ATP are then going to be used in the light independent reactions. So in the light independent reactions, we're going to have carbon dioxide as our other reactant. This is going to come in to what we call the Calvin cycle. And so this here will be a cycle that's going to ultimately produce some glucose, but then keep going around the cycle. So the first step of the cycle is that we are going to have a five carbon molecule, and we're gonna add carbon dioxide to that five carbon molecule. Using the enzyme Rubisco, so we have the enzyme Rubisco, this is going to split the five carbon molecule into two three carbon molecules. So we'll split this into three carbon molecules. At this point, we're gonna use energy from NADPH and ATP to help us transform this into something called PGOL. PGOL is another three carbon molecule. As this happens, so now we've recycled ADP and NADP+. So PGOL is going to now combine with another PGOL to produce glucose. The other remaining compounds will go back into the cycle. And so then carbon dioxide comes in again, joins with a five carbon molecule, goes to a three carbon, goes to PGOL, and then makes glucose. Now with glucose, I'm gonna grab purple, and I'm going to call this a long-term energy storing compound. So this is gonna be glucose. This is long-term energy. So this is long-term energy and it's going to be used by heterotrophs. So we're gonna use this long-term energy. It'll be used by heterotrophs. Heterotrophs will break it down in cellular respiration and then ultimately use it for processes like active transport, but we'll talk about that later whenever we look at cellular respiration. I just wanna summarize real quickly. So again, we have our reactants, which we will have in red, and so I'm gonna put a little box around our water. We have sunlight, which isn't really a reactant, just part of what we need, and then carbon dioxide. You could see where they come in for each part. And then we have our products, which will be our oxygen and our glucose. The last one thing I forgot to color is our stroma. So our stroma is all of the space. I'm gonna take yellow. Stroma is all of our space inside of the chloroplast, and this is where the light independent reactions take place. Finally, with the transformation of energy, we transform light energy into chemical energy, and I'm going to put an orange box around this because this is chemical energy in the form of ATP and NADPH. Then we're going to take that chemical energy and we're going to transform it into long-term chemical energy. So this is going to be into glucose or into long-term chemical energy versus whenever we transform it here, which will be more of a short term. So light dependent 
light independent reactions, those are the two parts of photosynthesis.